I'm doing with Bobby M is back on YouTube finally, and Jay is here. We're going to be building him a, an immersion chiller, and he went to coppertubingsales.com and picked up 50 feet of half-inch refrigeration tubing, which we have here. And we'll talk about some of the other parts we're going to need to put this chiller together. Uh, we're going a little bit higher tech than you have to, uh, just to make it nicer. But I'll show you why we did that later. First thing you're going to need is four three-eighths inch uh, elbows. And uh, again, we'll show you why you need that. And the reason why they're three-eighths is because the inside diameter of this half-inch tubing is actually three-eighths. So we also scavenged some uh, short pieces off of the larger roll. And this 21 inch piece is gonna be the upright that takes the water down to the bottom of the coil. And then these two six inch pieces are gonna be um, attached to the top so that the water in and out will clear the top of the pot. Next thing you need is uh, your fittings to convert from the tubing to hose thread. And you have your male hose thread, which is three quarter inch, and your female. And because they're brass, we can solder those right onto the tubing. Of course, since we're going to be doing soldering, we're going to need a few tools for that. You have uh, wire brushes to clean up the copper and the fittings. Uh, you need uh, acid paste flux. You can use the water soluble stuff, but I don't like it at all. I like this stuff better. You're going to need a brush to apply it. We have some uh, lead free solder, of course. It's going into your wort, so you don't want any lead in there. You need a tubing cutter. This is a miniature one, but they come a little larger. Uh, you're also going to need your propane torch and a flame to light it. Okay, the, the tubing is already in a, in a general coil shape, so we're not going to straighten this out before we coil it. I found that a, a keg is a really good diameter to use because it's going to fit into tall, skinny pots like turkey fryers, and then it's also going to fit into the keg. Most of the holes in the top of kegs are 12 inches in diameter, and this is a pinlock keg, which is about 9 inches in diameter, and, you know, a ball lock keg is close enough as well. You know what, let's, let's try turning it upside down. And now there's actually a place... Tuck it in? Yeah, maybe tuck, tuck that end in temporarily. Right Let's try another opening. Yeah, that works. Okay. So you just keep working it around. Uh, obviously, a 50 foot coil is a two person operation, which we just discovered. And uh, one person needs to hold the, the weight of the rest of the coil up, while the other person uh, makes the, the coil nice and tight around your form, whichever you're using. A little bit of uh, sandpaper on the outside pieces goes a long way uh, to getting a good joint. If, it's, if this is even a little bit dirty, you're going to have solder melting and flowing everywhere except for where you want it to go, which is inside the joint. But you take your paste flux and get it on your brush, and you, you give a nice light coating on here and get it everywhere that the, uh, that the solder needs to flow to. So you want to apply the heat to the bulkiest pieces. So in this case, it's going to be the fitting. And you can apply a little bit to the, uh, the thinner pipes. But you want to heat everything pretty evenly, so you spend a lot of time on the heavier fitting. And you'll know when it's ready to go, it's going to smoke, and the, uh, the flux is going to bubble a bit, but you can keep testing it. Take the flame away. Touch the solder to the joint. If it doesn't flow right away, you're not hot enough. So the next thing we did is we uh, flipped it over and we trimmed the piece. We saw that it came up to this upright. We trimmed it so that uh, both of these uprights would meet together. So we can bind these together later on to make it, the structure more rigid. So we cut it, we cleaned the, the copper, and we slipped our elbow on here. So we're going to solder this piece on now.
Again, we're probably gonna put some solder on these uprights to keep this a little more rigid. And we used our brass fittings. Uh, it turned out that these are um, 5 8 hose barb and they're really meant for putting onto a garden hose or repairing a garden hose. Um, the inside the diameter of these barbs was very close to half inch, they're probably a little smaller. Um, we locked these into a vise and drilled it out with a half inch drill bit and made it so that that would slip nice and uh, firmly over the copper. So now we just have to solder these and we're not using any hose clamps or anything like that and we're really reducing the chance of leakage uh, under high pressure. Alright, so we're just going to solder these up and uh, we'll show you the finished product. This would probably sit in uh, a turkey fryer pot and still be submerged in five or six gallons of wort. And when you now go to 10 or 12 gallons in a kegel, what you can do is shorten the, the upright that comes off of the top of the coil. Uh, of course, breaking the solder connection with a little bit of heat. And then you can stretch the coil so that there's about a half inch or three quarters of an inch uh, spacing in between each coil. And um, again, you're just shortening this one upright here and making it a taller coil um, for larger batches. And of course, you know, if you don't, if you can't do solder connections, uh, now's a great time to learn. It's not the end of the world if you have a few leaks. You can always keep reworking the joints. But you can see, you could never make such a nice bend in half-inch copper. Um, at this tight of a radius and that goes for the bottom piece as well I mean you can make a long sweeping turn to come up, but it's not going to be this neat and this rigid so give it a shot